What's up YouTube? I wanted to give you guys a video on bio pellets today and hopefully I cover most of the questions that you have and that I have had in the past about bio pellets before I decided to start using them. So what are bio pellets? Uh, bio pellets help us manage our nitrates and our phosphates in our system. Uh, I would say more on the line of the nitrate versus the phosphate because uh, you can use GFO to help aid the bio pellets uh, to remove phosphate uh, if you're feeding heavily. Now what the bio pellet actually is, it's a food source for a heterotrophic bacteria. Uh, the bio pellets are 100% biodegradable by this heterotrophic bacteria. Uh, what the bacteria does is it eats the organic material but it doesn't actually complete the nitrogen cycle it assimilates the nitrate and the phosphates to grow. Uh, basically, assimilation is uh, something that eats and swallows uh, the nutrients uh, inge and ingests them so that it can grow uh, somewhat like your chato or macroalgae in your sump. Uh, dissimilation is something that breaks down uh, the proteins, kind of like your biological filter uh, where your protein turns to ammonia, the ammonia turns to nitrate, the nitrate turns to nitrate, and then is removed via your skimmer. So that's just to kind of give you an idea of what the actual bio pellets do and the bacteria that's on it that's growing. So how much of the bio pellets should you actually use? Really, it depends on your system. Uh, it's recommended to start with half the dose uh, to prevent uh, bacterial blooms that can actually cloud your water and uh, you know give you other problems like cyano and it, it just can if it's introduced too fast it can be a bad thing just like anything else uh, it could take up to two weeks for the bacteria to actually colonize the pellets inside the reactor so a lot of people like to supplement the bacteria uh, depending on the brand you want to use you know you can speed up the process of the growth of the bacteria inside the reactor and as that happens um, you can gradually increase the dose after a few weeks to see you know how it affected your tank um, but I would definitely test uh, nitrate and phosphate levels before adding any more uh, just to ensure that the amount of bio pellets that you have inside the, the, the reactor isn't already adequate for the tank that you have versus adding more in there and stripping your tank of the nitrate and the phosphates. So um, this can really be uh, very touchy depending on uh, the amount of flow that you got going through your reactor. Now it's best to suspend your pellets calmly but if the nitrate is not lowering over time then probably the flow is too slow. But then you're at risk of hydrogen sulfide uh, accumulating inside your reactor. Now that happens because it becomes an anoxic region and that is basically a part of your water system that is basically depleted of dissolved oxygen. Now dissolved oxygen is basically your ORP if you have an ORP probe. Uh, it's very important to maintain that because that's how your fish breathe. Uh, you get that through circulation, uh, surface skimming with an overflow, or even an air stone. Um, when you introduce bio pellets to your system, you're going to notice that your ORP goes down, just like when you add a fresh bag of carbon. Carbon makes your ORP lower. Uh, it's usually for the people that are implementing ozone to their system because the carbon collects the O3 molecules. So by not suspending the pellets, hydrogen sulfide may accumulate, but I'm not sure how fast. Uh, high flow through the pellets can actually strip your tank of nitrate and phosphate. So if you're going to use a high flow through your reactor, it's probably better that you use less pellets than the recommended dosage because then you'll have too much contact time and it'll just it'll be bad in the long run basically. Uh, you don't want to bleach any of your stuff. Um, so if you're using the flow to suspend your pellets, uh, maybe way too much flow and when you remove the small amounts of phosphate and nitrate, um, you can actually hurt the SPS and the softies because the SPS or the hard coral needs a small amount of phosphate for calcification. 
and soft corals need a small amount of nitrate needed as a food source for their internal algae. Hence, you basically bleach or crash your tank by introducing the bio pellets too fast. Um, and that's because the bacteria never stops eating. And essentially, when you tumble the bio pellets, uh, you're shedding the bacteria slowly off of the pellets and it's going into your water, water column. And it's basically, uh, it produces like a biofilm. The biofilm can be food for your corals. Uh, it's a good source of carbohydrates, which is rich in nutrients. Um, but the bad part is, is if, if those nutrients are allowed to go into your tank and sit somewhere and you know a gather in a corner and you know just basically a, a low flow spot you're at risk of an algae bloom so using the protein skimmer with the reactor to remove these bright byproducts or the biofilm uh, basically just by sticking the outlet of the reactor in front of the inlet of your skimmer should reduce some of these problems now they do make some type of an adapter where you can hook it up directly to the pump of your skimmer and hook the reactor directly up to that you know adapter and the water that uh, releases out of the reactor goes directly in your skimmer. In my case I more or less just have it pointing right in front of it and I think it's more than adequate. Uh, another way to reduce problems uh, with the bio pellets is the contact time with the pellets. Now this will reduce the bacterial blooms in your tank but that comes with more or less uh, having a reactor that's built for bio pellets now I'm using the two little fishies 150 reactor so I actually have a reduced amount or reduced dosage of the bio pellets uh, because I'm using flow to tumble the pellets and not actually have a reactor that can tumble the pellets and manage the amount of contact time from the tank and the pellets. Um, but in the long run, I really think uh, the benefits outweigh the risks if you use it properly. Uh, it's kind of like a easy set and forget type of thing. But don't forget to test your levels during the beginning to see how your nitrate and your phosphates being affected. And one way to know if your phosphates are being stripped out of the tank is basically your macroalgae will stop growing um, and your system can basically uh, be considered a low nutrient system from there once the macroalgae stops growing. Um, it's also okay to aid your pellets with GFO. Uh, if you're a heavy feeder with a lot of fish, you can still use GFO with the bio pellets because like I said in the beginning, the bio pellets are gonna concentrate more on the nitrates than the phosphates, although it will remove some of the phosphates but not all the phosphates. And that brings me to another kind of topic with uh, soluble reactive phosphate and organic phosphate. Now the soluble reactive phosphate is what your algae eats, but it's only about 5% of, uh, of the phosphate in the tank and that comes from, the, from like food and stuff that you feed. There's still organic phosphate that the algae doesn't eat. Uh, what, that is, what that is is dead organisms on your rock that turn into soluble reactive phosphate, hence getting the algae blooms because it's slowly leaching off your rock into your water column. Um, but like I said, with these bio pellets, they're great. They just need to be used properly. Pay close attention to what you're doing, guys, and you should have a lot of success with bio pellets. Happy reefing.